Hello everyone and welcome back to our survival series. In this episode we are going to carry on from where we left off with making the pickaxe and we're going to make the tool more useful for the game's purposes. That's going to go through adding the interface structure to it as well as making it able to deal damage. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to work on is our tool. At the moment our tool is just playing a montage when we right click. Um, as demonstrated uh, down here. Uh, but I want to make an interface that will work with this instead rather than doing a hard-coded play montage. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, as I mentioned before, we are carrying on from the inventory series. So if you haven't done it, don't worry, go back and watch that first and go through that. Uh, because part of that is the interact interface. And we're going to use that one to help us do this. Let's go into our inventory folders here and look for the interact interface. And in here, we're going to create a new function called use item. Now, it's important not to get confused with the one that Epic have pre made already inside of the first person template, as there is one called on use item. We want to make sure we don't call it that one instead. On use item here, we'll close that. And when we left click, we're going to just get rid of this for now. And when we left click, we want it to call that on our child actor. Our child actor being our, in this case, axe in our hand. So we're going to drag out that into the event graph on the primary action input. I'm going to drag this out and I'm going to get the child actor that this component spawns. And plug that in to use item message. And I can get rid of that call on use item there. Okay, so now I just need to apply that interface to my tool. So let's go into our tools folder, go to the tool parent, and I'm going to go to the full blueprint editor and go to class settings. Inside there, I'm going to go to interfaces and add that interact interface to this. And this also handles the problem of what happens when we want to equip a, uh, the item, like pick up off the ground. That is how we're going to handle that too later on as well. With that interface now applied, you can now see use item is on these interfaces down here. And if I double click on it, it'll implement it. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that the uh, player reference is going across so I know who I should be playing the animation for. So let's go and edit that use item to send over who is using it. So go to use item, go down to inputs, add new input, and we'll call this one player character. And we want to change that to our first person character reference. Compile that and go back to your tool. And if you compile this, that will give you an error. Just delete it, put it back in again with the reference there. So what we've got to do is just drag that from there, get hold of the mesh component. And we want the first person mesh. And we're going to take it to play montage. And the montage we want to play is by default going to be this axe attack montage that we made last episode. But I'm actually going to promote that to a variable. And that is so that each tool can then have a different animation applied to it and it'll still work. So let's test this out. I first of all go back to my first person character and uh, recompile this. Uh, let's do that. Break out this again, put use item again. There we go. We needed the prior character reference. That'd be self. Uh, we don't want input touch. We we'll want to delete that. Like so. Okay, so we've got that saved, and we're going to go test that out. And we should still swing our axe or not. And I click, and sometimes this can happen. So, like, nothing would happen. And that is because we made it a variable on the tool. So for example, if we go back to our tool pickaxe, we've got the variable up here, montage to play. But if you've got it as a child actor, sometimes it doesn't go across. So just go to back to your first person character, go to child actor component, and on the right hand side, you'll see your tool pickaxe as the option selected. And if you open up the template there, you can then see default, and you can see that montage to play is empty. 
So if you were to just take the tool pickaxe off, say it to none, and then put it back to pickaxe. Just check that again, and it should now show properly. If it doesn't, you can set it manually there to override it. But now that's in there, we should now see our axe swinging away. Cool. Okay, so what I'm going to do is now set up our axe here to do damage to things in front of it. So let's go over to our montage here, axe attack uh, montage, and we're going to do this with a uh, notify event. Let's go into the montage, and at the point where we want it to deal damage, we're going to go across and about there. We're going to right click, add notify, and do montage notify. Hit save, and there we go. So let's go back to our tool pickaxe. And in here, we're going to set up, well, sorry, go back to our tool. And in here, we're going to set up a new custom event here to deal damage to anything in front of us. So we're going to write a custom event, deal damage. And I put this in the parent because all my tools are going to have the same stuff. So it makes sense for it being a parent. And this deal damage gets called when the notify begins. So just come out of there and do um, deal damage. And deal damage is going to do a simple uh, trace out to determine if there's anything in its path. So we're going to do a sphere trace. By channel. And we're going to start in position here. We're going to do get player camera manager. And because we're in first person, I want to use a camera manager here. And I get the location of the camera. By doing either get actor camera, camera location or get actor location. Either way. Same thing goes into start there. The end point is going to be a little bit ahead of the camera's direction. So you take the camera manager, get its direction from the forward vector, and then from that I can multiply that by a float. And when I multiply it by a float, I'm basically extending out this forward vector. So this will give me my range. So let's say we change that to 100. I'm now going to add that onto my starting location. And that should give me my end point. So plug that in like so. And give it some radius here. We'll go for 16. And for visibility, trace, we'll leave that as visibility. That's fine, uh, for, at least for now. Draw debug, we'll turn on for duration, just for now while we're testing this out. And that'd be good. Okay, so let's test to see to make sure that trace is actually happening. So that deal damage is going to happen here on Notify Begin, which is good. Let's go across to our level. And we can see that line trace, that sphere trace, sorry, coming out and dealing damage to something. Okay. Now, as you can see, it's probably a bit too, uh, too short. I'll make it a little bit longer. At least so I can look down at the chest and hit the chest if I wanted to. So I'm going to go back to our tool and just change that range there. In fact, what I can do here is also I can uh, promote that to a variable. And call that range. And now each tool can have its own specific range. I'll set the starting one here to 150. The other things we want to add to this are going to be also the damage we deal as well. So let's add another variable in here for the damage. And we'll call it base damage, in fact. And give that a float. And on the out here, when return value, we're going to put that into a branch. So we only do this if it's true. And the other condition we'll be checking as well is whether or not the item we're hitting can receive damage. So take that out the hit and break it open. I'm going to take the hit actor and type in can be damaged. And put that into a branch. Okay. Next we are going to then apply damage to this. Apply damage. The damaged actor is going to be our hit actor. The base damage is going to be our base damage value. The event instigator is the controller who is doing this damage. So when we go into a multiplayer modes, we can make sure that a specific plague is the one that gets the resources. So on the event instigator, I'm going to drag this out and get um, own uh, get instigator controller. Damage causer, we'll do self, so we know what tool damage, and that'll do. 
Okay, and that should apply damage to anything that we receive. Now, to test this out, I want to make a simple uh, parent node that we'll be using for our nodes later on. So, I'm going to make a new folder here for nodes. And nodes refer to our resource nodes in the world. So, it'd be like trees, rocks, or those sort of things. I'm going to make a parent one of these. So, blueprint class, actor, node. I open it up and give it a default uh, shape. We'll go for cube. And just give it some random orientation so it just looks a bit st standout-ish. Like that. Um, and if I go to the event graph, I can then do the event for any damage. Find it at the top here. And I'm just going to do a print string here to determine whether or not I actually took damage. So print string, damage into string. And that will determine whether or not I'm actually receiving them. Oh, but that will put in the world first. So there's our node. Put it there. So at the moment, it is... Oh, it's because we made the range a variable. We didn't actually set the variable. So I'm going to go back to our tool and set the range default value here to 150. Base damage here to uh, 50. But you get the same problem on the first person character because these range and base damage is not taken into account. So just reset that with the default reset. And away we go. So now we can go in and hit it. And here goes print string 50. And there we have it. We've now got our axe dealing damage to our fake node here. Next episode, we're going to go through the process of adding the ability to change the multiplier effect based upon damage that being dealt. So in most of other games, you'll notice that we have damage being dealt by different tools. We'll do different amounts of damage, and we're going to replicate that in the next episode. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can find all my videos early before everyone else from just $1 a month. Thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.